Community Radio for North Hearts. This is North Hearts Radio. Now, I am very, very thrilled and lucky uh, to have on the line local businesswoman and entrepreneur, Helen Froggart-Thompson. Hello, Helen. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Good. How are you keeping, working from home, etc.? Well, it's quite usual for me. I've been doing it for about 30 years. So um, you are uh, you, you run folk stock records uh, as well as all the other things that you do. Let's just touch on that briefly. How is this affecting uh, local musicians? It must be really tough for them at the moment. Yeah, obviously. It's, um, it's not only the fact that you haven't got the money that you would normally have from gigging regularly, but it's also, I think, a confidence issue as well. You know, it's... Um, if you have a break from performing, sometimes you can really notice it. And then the other option, of course, and a lot of people are doing this, is live streaming. Yes. And that is such a good idea. Um, mm, it's, and, just, and it's, it's just going to keep, dis- keep your hand in, isn't it, basically? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then you've got to find the right environment to do it in, and then you don't want the quality to be too low. So there's uh, quite a few uh, things to bear in mind, but... There are a lot of good apps around, and if you Google live streaming gigs, there's lots of advice. People are really stepping up the mark. So um, making sure that you have some sort of payment link as well is really handy um, when you are live streaming because, you know, essentially you, you don't really want people to have to pay to listen to you when they, you're live streaming. But if you've got a donate button, I really recommend that you link up your bank account or any other um, or put a link for your bank account purchases, yes, but maybe your a PayPal account or there are other methods as well for getting money online. And again, Google it because there's lots of options around the moment. They're springing up, which is really helpful. That's, that's a really good idea as well. I hadn't actually thought of that, that uh, you could have a donate button. Like you say, you, people are doing it really uh, for two reasons, I think. One, to keep their hand in. Uh, and secondly, to keep people entertained because there's not an awful lot to do. Well, there is, you know, it depends on who you are, but there's uh, not an awful lot to do at home. Uh, but to have a donate button, that's a great idea. I never even thought about that. Well, the, a lot of them rely on you know, the income from gigging as, as their primary income. Hmm. Um increasingly people have been dropping their day jobs because it's very very difficult to balance um getting to gigs setting up you know early evening or even late afternoon if it's a long way away and having a full-time job so lots of musicians in the last two years i would say particularly have had gigging as their primary income so it's a massive a massive blow and a mass huge sympathy for everyone concerned yeah okay um all right then so uh, also uh, you have got an article coming out in the comet uh this thursday uh about um uh, ideas for working from home uh 10 top tips uh, is that right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so cool isn't it it is <laughs> it's so good I, I love a bit of alliteration <laughs> that's, that's me alliteration <laughs> Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so can you give us a couple of a little bit of a preview, a couple of those tips that uh, people will be getting in the comment this week? I'll give, I'll give you a couple that are in it, and a couple that aren't in it that I think are very important. I realised since yeah. I wrote that. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's really important to have somewhere where you can set up a mini office, but if you can keep it in place all the time rather than have a set up and pack it up, pack it up each night and set up each morning, it's really difficult to do that because doesn't take much to distract you yeah totally <laughs> already there um i also i think lower the bar um we're so used to operating at full speed ahead and and rushing and now is the time to be able to step back slightly and, and consider what is enough yeah um rather than if i be superhuman here um we're trying to keep the wheels on the bus not reinvent the bus <laughs> yeah, totally. I think we've got to bear in mind that we've got to survive. And the difficulty is, of course, more than usual, is that if you've got your children at home as well now um, and you're trying to work, it can create a very stressful environment where you know you feel more guilty than ever that you're not spending time with your children and possibly getting annoyed with them if they're interrupting phone calls. I, I just think, really, everyone is in a completely different space. Nothing is the same as it was before. And people are going to be a lot more tolerant of children interrupting, cats getting in front of videos, and, you know, things like that. I think we're all just trying to survive, and I don't think we need to worry about the standards in, in that sense that we used to have before. I think getting dressed is really important, says she talking to you in her dressing gown. But <laughs> to, to be fair, only about a few minutes ago. So, um, But I do think 
trying to keep into a routine where you do get dressed by, say, nine. Um, and um, I think the guide is, would you be able to talk to your boss or manager uh, or a customer on Skype? <laughs> so bear in mind, you've got to keep it from the waist up. It's quite a good idea. Um, you know, and that's in terms of hair and anything you put on your face as well. It's just, I think it's important to be in that mindset where you're actually thinking about being at work, um, even though you're not actually in the environment. I do think that if you've got children and there's two adults at home, and obviously not everyone is in that privileged position, but it does create its own difficulties with your other half. Because if you're a woman um, or the primary caregiver, which actually, of course, doesn't have to be a woman, um, the assumption might be made that you're going to carry on being the primary caregiver just because at weekends you are. However, if you've got a business to run or even need some time for yourself, it will soon cause problems if one person is doing the bulk of the childcare and one person isn't. And I do think it's well worth agreeing a sort of rota with your other half, even if both people aren't working. I don't, and that might sound counterintuitive, but um, we, we, we all need our space. And we, we, apart from the fact that a lot of us are used to having five days apart as it is mm -hmm. from each other, as well as bulk of the day from our children. And we are going to need space. So even if there's one of the halves of your duo running the house um, isn't working, I do feel they should have an hour or two off to do whatever they wish. And that should be agreed in advance. And a sort of rough timetable. Because there's going to be some home education for children. And again, it's, it's great to have a, a plan. But if it's too strict, everyone's going to get fraught when it's not delivered. And, What's really important here is that we're kind and compassionate to each other and I think a lot more tolerant. <laughs> that's got to be one of the biggest things that's going to be important now. If we're going to have relationships that survive this, we're going to have to really lower the bar and lower our guilt and concentrate on, on each other. And if you're working from home, I think trying to get a buddy at work that you can speak to regularly um, almost like a mentor, but someone at the same level as you. I think it's really helpful. And keeping in touch with your manager and agreeing what is reasonable to expect each day. That sounds... If you're actually, if you're actually working from home. I mean, some people are being furloughed and being told, please, you don't need to come into work. We will pay you 80% of your salary, which the government are going to reimburse us for. No exact details of how that's going to happen yet, but it's planned for April. So there'll be about a month's lag in terms of money coming into companies from the government. However, a lot of companies are um, laying off their staff in terms of paying them to be at home. And that's a different thing. So you've got people that are not working, people that are working. Both are paid the same, which is up to 80% of their salaries to about about where 31,000 kicks in. If, you, if you're earning more than 31,000, then you would actually not get any more than 2,500 a month maximum. Mm -hmm. So this um, creates a dilemma is what you do with your got staff at home that aren't working. I really think you need to keep in touch with them as well. Keeping the team together is going to be even more important now. Um, and agreeing with your manager what they expect you to do in a day or in a week or if it's a project, agreeing the various steps of the project because we can't work in isolation. Most of us need a form of regulation and, and some way to be feeling we're getting, getting somewhere, you know, some form of achievement. Um, at the end of the week, you don't want to think, oh, what was the point of all that? No one's even spoken to me. You know, you, we all need that feedback, whether we're at work, in the office, which obviously can't be now, or whether we're at home. And arguably more now, we need more than ever to have that contact with work and colleagues. I totally and, agree. And, I totally and agree. Not just, yeah, and not just the work bit, it's the fun bit too, sharing memes, sharing funny videos. Um, there's, there's lots of ideas that I've got on a, on a feature actually in, on my thompsontraining.com website. I'm doing a blog now um, with articles that I've written that I think help people in this position. And I've got loads and loads of ideas for entertaining children as well and managing um, people right. remotely. 
do you think that well. do you think that companies and so you just mentioned there about some workers being at home and um, not being employed but still need to be kept in touch with do you think that companies um, could encourage their employees that can't go to work to um, take up some volunteering um, practices as well because there's an awful lot of volunteering that's going on at the moment that can be done remotely you don't have to be in touch with people things like website design and all that kind of stuff do you think it's a good idea for companies to divert their current staff if they can't work for them to do other things? I think it's a very, very uh, slippery slope because I think ideally people should want to volunteer if they're going to do it. Um, I think maybe providing, if, if possible, sort of resource of local places they could volunteer, but a lot of people aren't, aren't going to want to leave their homes. Um, telephone support, I think, is going to be something that will be increasingly popular and I, I saw this morning someone talk about training people up to to be volunteers to do phone support to people who are isolated or need it, you know, need extra support. So I think I think if you're actually going to furlough someone, you either have to make it very clear that they actually have no work obligations or they have some right from the start. Otherwise, you're going to get miscommunication there as well. And saying to someone, well, you ought to volunteer if you're not going to work for us, is a little bit domineering i would say personally okay. I, I, I think i think encouraging people by saying here's a list of things to do that we've heard of but um i think also people like to take initiative with voluntary activities mm-hmm. great and, uh, do you think there's yeah. anything we'll take away from this in a permanent uh, way you know our, oh. our practices will change permanently Massively. Okay, Naturally. so what kind of things, if you don't, I'm putting you on the spot a little bit there, because I didn't right. suggest... We'll before, right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think will, at the, you know, when we all kind of get back to whatever normal is uh, in the future, what kind of things do you think that will, will be different for us from on a permanent basis? Um, I'm hoping that materialism will have a complete reboot and that we won't feel we have to have the latest this or that. Um, but unfortunately, that's what fuels the economy. So I think there's going to be a lot of people wanting us to spend money that maybe we don't have because there'll be quite a lot of debt. Um, I think relationships will change. I think people will have noticed in this period that perhaps spending time being slower about life has actually been quite enjoyable. And I, I, think, I think I, for one, will definitely not want to go back to the state I was in before rushing around and trying to do this, trying to do that, and appreciating the small things in life. So, you know, literally noticing that the full five years out and how great it looks against the beautiful blue sky we've got today. Mm. Looking at the sun coming through the daffodil leaves. I know I'm being a bit... Yeah, <laughs> a bit no, no paying here. attention. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> you know, and you're so very... Easy. Yeah, and you're a very spiritual person as well, so I, well, uh, I yeah. hope you don't mind me mentioning that. But uh, uh, so that is a you know a positive change there, and also of course the environment as well. Uh, I know you're very into the environmental side of things, and uh, you see the map of uh, China, you know the aerial map of China now from space, and it shows that uh, you know pollution has obviously plummeted. Uh, it, the air is so much clearer now. Do you think that is going to have a big change for us as well? Yes. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people thinking that Greta has got what she wanted. Um, I guess the old proverb of be careful what you wish for springs to mind because with the law of abundance, you can ask for something, but the root is not in your control. Um, how many of us have wished or if I need to stop off the world? Yeah. And that's what's happened, isn't it? We, the, the, the bizarre thing I find is that we're watching TV, we're watching films, say, and normally when you come off, that sort of environment, you're back into the real world, oh, everything's fine, we have not, we're, not in, <laughs> we're not in a zombie apocalypse. But now, actually, when we come off most programs now, other than the news, um, we think, actually, God, our reality is worse <laughs> than yeah. the programs we're watching. Everything has switched. And I think it's going to be very important that we all notice each other more, that we're all paying more attention, which seems to be happening. Mm. And I think there's a lot of positive effects. But if you're worried about money coming in on a week-by-week basis, then you may not have that luxury. And I do feel that when I read Bill Gates' quote yesterday, um, which was sort of all over social media, I thought, yeah, it's a bit rich coming from you, actually. <laughs> um, you, you're in a position of privilege here. You're not worrying about getting money on the table, money, you know, money in and food on the table each day. 
And whilst I know he has amazing charitable foundations, things like that, he's still from a very from a very privileged position and arguably what he's been creating has been fueling all our desires that he's now saying we shouldn't have any more, that we should be more grateful for smaller things in life and not be materialistic. So it, I think it's quite important that we keep um, a handle on the reality for a lot of people and especially the self-employed. But I do feel this week will make a material difference to what's on offer. Of course, the mechanism is what the problem is, because is it, is it going to be on profit over the last three years, averaged out, or which for a lot of people will be very low, or actually earnings. <laughs> earnings are quite different to profit. Yeah, totally. Um, and I haven't made profit for years. Uh, so... <laughs> that's because you're doing the things that you love which is the oh, yeah i know thing. we're very well being optimistic um so so we'll have to see but i i do think it's it's a, it is a game changer and we're now in the new the new normal and i think over the next few weeks things will evolve and it's very early days but i wish everyone the best of luck and just be tolerant with everyone around you give everyone a lot more slack including ourselves and just try and enjoy as much as we can the small bits of each day and each night think about, you know, try and be grateful about things that have gone right. The fact that the omelette you made didn't turn into um, scrambled egg. In fact, it did, so I couldn't be grateful for that. But the mushrooms were nice. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> good advice. Grateful. Very good you advice. <laughs> if people want to connect with you, Helen, how can they do that? Um, the, best, the easiest thing is a, a simple email, which is Helen at thompsontraining.com and Thompson has no P in it T-H-O-M-S-O-N thompsontraining.com I've got a website too which is thompsontraining.com funnily enough Um, I'd I'd love to hear from anyone I I love the dialogue around this I think it's a fascinating topic um, and I'm thinking that some good things are coming out in the humanitarian area and we just need to push through the fear and once we reassure that we're going to have enough money to buy food that is the most important thing. I think people will be able to relax a bit more. Although, it's a lot of grieving going on because people have spent their lives building up their businesses and maybe you're at the point now where they've finally got some money coming in and everything is changing. Uh, and I think letting go of the past is going to be the hardest thing and accepting. We just have to take each day as it comes. Totally That's going right. to be the hardest thing moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. I, I 100% agree with you. Helen, thanks so much for coming on this morning. I really, really appreciate it and uh, all your great advice. Um, (laughs) And make sure everybody, uh, you read the comet tomorrow when it drops on your doorstep um, and or through your letterbox. Uh, If if it does, I don't even know if people are going to do it. Well, I don't know either. I don't know, but it's it's definitely, there's already a couple of pieces online. In fact, the whole of the arts and the cross architecture have been featuring what I've been writing on behalf of the accountancy practice. Great, yes, is, we should mention um, the accountancy practice, yeah, yes, in yeah, Royston. We've been, yeah, we've been doing articles that the whole of the Arch Network in Hertfordshire have been sharing, which is very good of them. And I'm going to be writing a piece each week for the Comet and the Well and Happle Times, Hearts Appetizer and Royston Crow. So there's going to be quite a lot of stuff going around, and I think the situation will evolve. There are new issues arising, which definitely will be worth writing about, and uh, it's some of the stuff that we can't anticipate at the moment but um watch the space absolutely great helen take care of yourself stay safe uh, and, and keep you. bringing us brilliant content because oh, uh, it you. is so good what you're what so you're doing there you. okay Thank then you. Okay, okay talk to you soon yeah bye take care. bye bye northartradio.com